doesn't seem to affect Terry O one bit. And a good left hook to the chin of Luke. It's a good tight boxing on the inside. He doesn't wait. I mean, that's the thing. As soon as he touches him on, on the inside, he starts going at it. Head, body, short hooks and uppercuts everywhere. Hello, welcome back to Ride Out MMA. My name's Connor, and today we're going to be doing some fight commentary on some old school kickboxing. We're going to be watching Jean Yves Thoreau versus Kerry Roop, happened in 1982. This is their third fight, and it's a good one. There's a sweet finish at the end, so make sure you watch the whole thing. But yeah, we're going to be breaking down technique, uh, just looking at what kickboxing was like back then compared to what it is now and how it has an influence on modern MMA. But, anyways, if if you like this type of commentary stuff, make sure you uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, maybe leave a comment about a fight that maybe we can do in the future. Anyways, let's get into it. So thanks for watching. Alrighty, here we are. So we have the PKA World Middleweight Championship between Jean-Yves Thoreau and Kerry Roop. Happened in 1982. Uh, it's a fantastic fight, honestly. That's why we're doing this. I was going to do, actually, another one with Jean-Yves with uh, Don Wilson, but it wasn't really that exciting. I think there'd be some cool techniques that we could talk about in it, but in general, it wasn't like that cool. Uh, but this one's super exciting. I love the fighting that was happening all throughout of it. Uh, it's happening in John Eve's home turf. Uh, Kerry Roop, it, we're in Montreal, and Kerry Roop is uh, coming down in weight. He is the light heavyweight champion, and he is going for the middleweight championship, and let's get into it. They fought uh, three times, or two times before. This is their third time, with uh, Thoreau winning both of those. It's a big contrast of styles with these guys too, right? Roop, pretty aggressive. He's a little bit more wild, definitely a stronger, more naturally athletic guy. And then uh, Thoreau there, right? He's a little bit, obviously, more lanky, but he's like tight. He's fundamental. He doesn't make big, crazy movements in general. You know, he's just staying to his style the entire time. This is like the fourth time I've watched this fight tonight, so <laughs> let's do it together. Generally fights at about 180. He had to get down under 170. But this uh, style of kickboxing, they're not allowed to kick the legs at all. They're not allowed to clinch. There's no knees. There's no elbows. So you're only allowed to kick the body in the head, and you have to do a minimum of eight per round. So you get this really exciting style where there's like no break in the action at all. And they're just going for like big power kicks. There's an axe kick for you from Roop. They throw a lot of those though. You, know, you don't see that type of strike anymore. But it's got its place. The guys just don't want to try it. We'll see a lot of techniques that I think should really come back. With that snappy round kick off the front. No telegraph, right off the mat to your opponent. Up to the body, up to the head, wherever it goes. Super snappy with everything. Thoreau has like a really tight boxing style though. It's almost like Mexican style. He's trying to wade his way in. Right. Close the distance on Roop. Fight a little bit on the inside. And that right there tells you how much he's committing into those strikes when he tries. You know, it kind of reminds me of Justin Gaethje. If Justin Gaethje misses a kick or a punch, he'll spin in a fucking circle. Same with this guy, Thoreau. Really cranking his body into every single shot, not just whipping the arms. And that's the difference in the power. Even though he doesn't look like a big, strong guy, he gets tons of power because he actually turns himself into these strikes. And uses every part of his shoulders and his hips into them. Roop's good too. He's a little bit more active, but just a bit more wild. Axe kick. First round, give it to Roop. I think it was clean, clean Roop. Round two of this Roop. championship fight. Joe, how'd you score that one? I had that as an even Spin and hook kick to start the round, which, uh, I don't know, when I see guys start the round with almost their flashiest move, it's kind of like you're laying your trump card on the table right away. Like, set it up, lead them into it. Make them think that it's never going to happen, and then suddenly it does. Right? Let them forget about that strike. Don't start with it when 
You know, Thoreau is theoretically his most defensive, right? He's just getting back into action. Love that. Again, look at the body turn he gets on every single strike. Let's go back to that uppercut. The way that he turns himself into it, boom. Right, perfect form, sh uh, shifting his body all the way through. And a lot of the time when Thoreau throws his uh, rear hand, he'll shift his rear foot forward with it. And you see it here to set up that power jab right afterwards. He's almost like jumping into the punch as he gets. Hard shot then by Terry but Ruth still seems to be undaunted. These two gentlemen met back in 1979. Thoreau's just trying to keep out of Roop's mid-range. He doesn't want to hang out there in the middle much. He's trying to get nice and tight to him so he can land a lot of shots and use some of his longer strikes on the outside, like all those front kicks. And again, like shifting in as he throws that cross. He doesn't want to hang out to be countered. Group normally fights light heavyweight, almost nine pounds heavier than Terrio. It's funny, Terrio, uh, or let's call him Thoreau, Terrio. Love that short right hand. Group lands his own right hand. And it doesn't seem to affect Terrio one bit. And a good left hook to the chin of Root. It's a good tight boxing on the inside. He doesn't wait. I mean, that's the thing. As soon as he touches him on, on the inside, he starts going at it. Head, body, short hooks and uppercuts everywhere. This fight is not yeah. going 12 rounds. <coughs> That's some actually really good boxing technique right there. Watch how he sets up this short, dirty boxing uppercut. Right, he connects his shoulder to him right there. So he's already hiding his right hand. Roof has no idea where uh, Jean's right hand is. And just as Jean realizes that Roop starting to lift his head, right, he gives him that little gaze there. And again, his hand is still hidden from behind, right? He turns out, but not by taking his bod body away, not by pulling his head back, but bu just by turning his shoulders. You set up that really short this fight is not going 12 rear miles. uppercut. Boom, boom. And following up with that lead hook. Super good tight boxing. We see the difference between the way that Roop throws that tight hook. He like tries to swing his arm out and in. It's no way to fight on the inside. Round three of this middleweight championship fight. John Eves Terrio, a French Canadian, fighting in Montreal. He's very nice relaxed. This his hands don't really have a lot of movement. It's a lot of the uh, style that I'm trying to implement with my guys as well as myself. It's sort of relaxed. No telegraph, and super explosive and to the point with every single strike that you throw. It's not about having stiffness to your body, but just stillness. Love that. Boom. What a perfect follow-up. It's really complicated footwork to do that type of technique effectively. You gotta make sure your foot lands perfectly after the first kick. I love the way you know, every time Terrio misses one of his uppercuts, it just shoots like almost right above his own head. His full commitment. Boom. Again, that perfect uppercut. Uh, that's one of the most Beautiful uppercuts I've ever seen. It's a short left hook again. Looks like it's kind of wrapping around to the back of the head. Boom. And this right here is like kickboxing 101 to me. Setting up your boxing with your kicks. Uh, the biggest difference between uh, like Muay Thai and kickboxing a lot of the time is the style of kick that they throw. Right, A kickboxer can just sort of snap his leg up there. And at the same time he does that, he's setting up boxing off of either hand. It just depends on where his shoulder position is. And this is with Umar Nurmagomedov that we uh, did a breakdown of last week. Couldn't post the whole thing because the UFC took it down. But anyways, just when he's throwing his right kick, he's pulling his right shoulder back. As that right kick goes back to the ground, boom, he can snap it off 
into a cross. It's the same mechanics as a Superman punch, opposed to turning yourself all the way over with a kick. And then as your foot's coming back, you can sort of follow it with a punch. You can load a punch on the same side and snap it off. Very, very accurate punch. And he does that a lot if you watch close. Gary Roop stated that there was no one else in the world for him to fight. Again, did it right there, exact same technique. It's not that I don't like uh, Roop, but Thoreau just has such, or sorry, Terrio has such tight, tight striking. He doesn't give you a ton of holes. No, he is a tight, very reserved guard. Oh. Still getting hit, though. It's a hard fight for him. Again, Roop is the light heavyweight champ, so he's no pushover. In full contact karate. It's the dirty boxing that's making all the difference. All that fighting on the inside that Thoreau keeps, uh, Terrio keeps forcing him into. Hitting that front kick from so close in, too. Mechanics are really weird. Because it's not a push kick at all, right? He's trying to stab it into his gut. So it's very, like, snappy. Again, starting with the flashiest thing he could possibly throw. It's not going to work on a guy who's as tight and reserved as Terry Oaken. Little bit right body hook there. All right, short lead uppercut to set up the right hand. Oh. It's even trickier. By one point now. Love that combination. Jab, front kick, reloads the jab. Look how straight that is, lining up that right hand. Boom. And a lot of the time, Terry O is shifting in with his cross. All right, you see him right, when he's using his longer range strikes. He's falling forward with them. So he throws that cross and he sort of lands right on top of Roop. He's trying to keep out of the mid-range, more or less, is what it, it seems to me. He's confident in all those spaces, but where he wants to get to is in that range right there, right where his shoulder's connected, right? You see him keep crashing. Because you could really go one of two ways when you're uh, worried about a counter from your opponent. Right? You could move in or you can move out. Well, I guess you can move side to side as well. But anyways, th let's think about it uh, as that dynamic, moving in or out, right? It's intuitive for when your opponent starts to strike you to step back. But that actually gives your opponent a lot more space to follow up and continue to strike. When you move in, you don't really give them the same opportunities. You're forcing them to have to make space before they strike again versus just continue to follow up and let their momentum sort of take them into whatever uh, strikes they want to be throwing next. But you can see Terry O, right, every time, he, not every time, but a lot of the times when he's landing that cross, he goes one, two, his rear foot is sort of shifting in with it so he can land right on top of Roop, preventing Roop from countering. Well, let's watch that combination again because it's beautiful, right? Jab again crashes in, right, not letting Roop set up his counter there, right, fighting from the inside, short, one, two, and then lining up, boom, that perfect liver hook. One more time. Oh, beautiful combination. I'm sure Roop would really overwhelm a lot of those guys, though. And it seems like he's a pressure fighter as well, but even just that right there. Watch him duck under that uppercut. He ducks under an uppercut, ballsy. Right, it connects his shoulder to him and starts moving him from behind right, to set up that next shot. 
He's really good with his shoulder position, constantly keeping him safe on the inside and as he starts to move in. He's been hitting that slip overhand a little bit too because Roop sometimes is telegraphing his lead hand and just when he does, Terrio slips to the inside of that jab and comes over top with his overhand. One of my favorite counters as well. Simple, straightforward, and really uh, sets to turn for guys throwing their jab. Well, perfect uppercut on the inside from Roop. See, both, both sides are, are setting up their kicks, or setting up their punches off of their kicks a lot. Right. Instead of making their kicks the accent, they land a kick to open up a hole for their punching. To where you get this crashing forward style. I don't know, I see a lot of similar movements in modern MMA. Like this style of fighting is, I think, really more similar to modern MMA striking than a lot of the other stuff we see from boxing and from uh, Muay Thai. The true kickboxing is really uh, the style of MMA striking. And that snappy front kick up the middle, bounce off the fence. That's <laughs> where Hope's did a one-two. Body roll, sets up the hook. His movement is so clean. He's so confident to duck underneath all of these strikes. Again, not hanging out in the mid range. As soon as he sees Roops attempting to throw, he crashes and stuffs it. It's not that I don't like Roop, but Terrio is just such a technical fighter, and you can tell he has such a thoughtful game plan. And he commits to it no matter what's happening. Roop seems to be a lot more. Look at that snap kick at the middle we just missed, too. Right here, I feel like this is going to be the kick of modern MMA, or rather of uh, MMA in 2023. Boom, snapping it up the middle. When you have a guy that's hunched over, it seems like the perfect kick to set up. Right, they're hunched over, they're leaning in. Right, where can they really go to defend themselves from that snap kick right up the middle? We're seeing it more. Terrio's 34 fights, he's won 31, 28 by KO. He is a very, very Damn. heavy hitter, and he's still giving away at least nine pounds to carry Roop. Roop landing hard, combination punches. Yeah, Roop looks like a bigger, stronger guy. But he's not, I don't think he's putting out as much power as Terrio. Again, always hitting that jab. He'll hit straights at almost any range. Just shooting his jab down the middle. Yeah, see right there. We've gone through five rounds of full contact. It's so hard to set up a combination when you're getting jabbed in the face by just prodding at them. I don't know, it's not looking good for Roop. I don't say that much. Round six. Terrio in black, Roop in red, and Roop has a cut underneath his right eye, Joe, and it does appear like the lashes are the uh, strings of Terrio's gloves caught it. But how do you have the fight scored so far? I've got Terrio ahead by two points. Yeah, you're not allowed to catch any kicks, not allowed to clinch. Every round, ten points, the loser from five to nine. I don't know good head movement from, from both guys. Again, like shifting in with the right hand. In MMA, obviously, you get taken down if you're throwing punches like that. Or you're not even clinching, you're doing any kind of grappling, it's not a bad idea. Oh, that lead hook kick. Again, just preventing him with the jabs. He has a Terrio perfect uh, showcase of that right there. 
right? That uppercut, and it's coming in with a couple more power strikes, and he just shoots a jab down the middle. That's all you need. Kill their rhythm to set your stuff up. And again, that slip overhand. Intercepting the jab with your overhand. Front kick from that close to. It's so unique. He's got great boxing. If he just did boxing, I'm sure he would have kicked ass. Better frame for kickboxing than long, thin guy. It's right there. He's doing a perfect, perfect job about fighting on the inside, right? staying nice and tight to his opponent, that kind of Mexican-style boxing, big power hooks from every angle, uppercuts, digging on the body, short one-twos, and then immediately giving a lot of space so he can set himself up again. He's trying to get Roop to chase him. Because when your opponent is chasing you, and this is your style, you want to close distance. If they start to chase you, all right, then the openings get closed uh, quicker when you want to move in. All right? It makes sense. You're both moving forward. When you crash, all right, you'll crash a little bit quicker if they're coming towards you versus just standing in place. All right, Roop should have been a lot more uh, reserved when he realized that this was going to be uh, Thoreau's strategy. All right? Instead of constantly sort of moving forward, giving Thoreau the ability to uh, close the distance right on top of him. And sneaky, jabbing, jabbing, straights. Uses those straights to get inside. That was a good combination. He starts beating him up with the dirty boxing. Combination again. Jab. Off of his kick, sets up his cross. One, two. On the inside, up hook. Falling up perfectly. Jab. See, I love that setup. Watch. Lands that front snap kick up the middle, but at the same time he's loading up that cross, boom. And look where he lands and immediately starts to shift off. One, two, frame, uppercut hook. Keeps doubling up on that lead hand. Yeah, he's an excellent striker. Simple, fundamental, definitely not too flashy, but just power shots and frustrating his opponent the entire time. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Uh, that was a really fun fight to watch. If you got any old school fights that you'd like to, me to watch and review with the rest of the channel, then please leave them in the comments or shoot me a message at Rideout MMA pretty much everywhere. Like the video if you enjoy these fight commentaries and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more in the future.